Good afternoon, everyone, especially to my fellow researchers. I am Maylin Sungkuan, a Doctor of Business Administration student from the Dilnasal University. Today, I'll be presenting a paper I co-authored with Dr. Epic Clark entitled Digital Lending for Micro, Small, and Medium Enterprises or MSMEs in the Philippines, Challenges and Opportunities. My presentation will cover the following introduction, theoretical framework, methodology, results, discussion, and recommendations. The difficulty faced by MSMEs in obtaining bank financing has been holding back the sector's growth. The contribution of MSME loans to banks' total lending portfolio fell to 6.1% in 2020 from 11.7% in 2019 as more lenders did not comply with the mandatory 10% credit allocation to the sector. Those who resort to external finance use informal non-bank credit sources more than banks. These include lending companies, microfinance institutions, and even 5-6 lenders that issue small loans at 20% interest rate since they provide collateral free and fast loan processing. Thus, we can see here that there is an apparent inconsistency between what MSMEs wish to expect from banks and what the banks can deliver. This is because most Philippine banks are still into traditional lending which involves a bank loan often requiring collateral, preparations, and multiple steps. Meanwhile, there is a recognized need for digital lending to MSMEs, which is the process of offering loans that are applied for, disbursed, and managed through digital channels in which lenders use digitized data to inform credit decisions and build intelligent customer engagement. Here is a summary of the features and characteristics of traditional and digital lending. In terms of interest rate, banks charge 6 to 10 percent per annum. Meanwhile, the convenience of online origination allows digital lenders to charge higher interest rates of 1 to 2 percent per month or 12 to 24 percent per annum, primarily to those borrowers who are more time sensitive. In terms of funding time, since most of the SME loans are collateralized, the actual loan disbursement can happen at two to four weeks. In contrast, the digital lending revolution can bring approval time down to five minutes and time to cash to less than 24 hours. In terms of access to credit, banks are cautious about lending to MSMEs due to absence of reliable financial statements. However, the development of digital inclusive finance can facilitate MSMEs access to credit. In terms of application criteria, traditional lending involves complex and cumbersome administrative and lending processes. On the other hand, with digital lending, open banking would provide a standardized means of sharing data about businesses. For collateral requirement, personal assets of MSME owners tend to matter more as collateral for MSME borrowing from banks. On the contrary, Digital lenders may be able to provide loans to firms and households without posting collateral using information. Lastly, in terms of approval, it will take three to five days for banks to approve loans, whereas it will just take less than 20 minutes for digital lenders. Due to these reasons, ADB stated that digital finance solutions could play a significant part in closing the gaps in financial inclusion. Digitization in MSME lending in other countries is flourishing. However, in the Philippines, there's not yet a Philippine bank that has implemented digital lending to MSMEs for business loans. Therefore, this study identified the challenges and opportunities of digital lending to Philippine banks and determined how Philippine banks can encourage MSME clients to adopt digital lending. The study is anchored on the theory of dynamic capabilities, which is the ability of the firm to combine, develop, and reconfigure external and internal expertise to respond to speedily changing environment. So the theory is applicable to the study since banks that adopt digital lending are early adapting organizations, which should take the opportunity to build, integrate, and reconfigure their internal competencies or strengths which include technology, systems, and their unique lending procedures in order to address the changing market environment in the Philippines to ensure that they achieve and sustain competitive advantage. The authors employed qualitative descriptive design using semi-structured interviews and results are analyzed using content analysis. 
criterion sampling was also used to recruit 12 participants who are directly involved in MSME lending. So this include credit officers who evaluate loan proposals, relationship managers who build and maintain client relationship, program managers who craft and implement financing programs and credit facilities, and department heads who oversee relationship managers. All participants have at least five years working experience under MSME lending, and their interviews were conducted from June to October 2021 through online and telephone interviews using open-ended questions. Table 2 shows the profile of the 12 interviewed SME banking practitioners who are working in local banks offering MSME loans. As you can see, most of the respondents are females, comprising 67% of the total population. Almost everyone, or 11 out of 12 respondents, have more than 10 years banking experience. And there is almost an even distribution as to job title, as respondents are comprised of relationship managers, program managers, credit officers, and department heads who have direct interface with MSME clients. Based on content analysis, the following themes and sub-themes were identified. In terms of challenges, there is lack of national digital infrastructure, which means that internet connectivity is unreliable and slow. Second is lack of established credit bureau like that in the U.S. Thus, this means that Philippine banks lack protection against fraudulent borrowers. Third, not all Philippine courts understand that digital lending platform is acceptable. Fourth, there's lack of technical information and know-how among MSME owners due to lack of understanding of the nature of loan products. Fifth, there is information asymmetry as MSMEs do not often provide accurate or reliable financials of their businesses, which makes it difficult for lenders to assess credit risk. Sixth, there's high cost to acquire or develop digital lending platform. Lastly, there is this traditional nature of MSMEs who prefer to talk with and transact through their relationship and branch managers. In terms of opportunities, five respondents believe that digital lending will help shorten the end-to-end -end MSME lending process. It will also simplify the loan application process. A department head noted that once open banking is established in the country, it would be easier to have alternative credit scoring data for clients with no reliable financial statements. On the other hand, eight respondents declared that automation will result to data accuracy by having a validation in place, process efficiency, which will result to real-time response, and banks can reach more customers and process more accounts through the digital platform. Lastly, the demand for digital platforms and online services is increasing. Thus, this presents an opportunity for digital software and platforms from local and foreign fintech companies in the banking industry. Lastly, all respondents believe that financial and digital literacy will encourage SME clients to adapt to digital lending. There's a need to encourage customers by sharing information, summarizing steps how to do online banking and press releases and how easy and accessible digital lending is. Second, banks will have to invest more in technology and digitally transform processes to achieve operational efficiency and increase flexibility and coverage. So one respondent said that digital lending applications should be user-friendly and easy to follow instructions. Then, there's a need to have transparency in terms of lending terms and conditions in order for clients to know the correct interest rate, amortization schedule, and other features of the product. Lastly, the respondents believe that there is a need to incentivize customers to use digital lending platforms. In order to address the challenges to digital lending, the authors believe that there is a need to have a holistic approach which involve cooperation and action from the government and the private sector in order to establish the needed infrastructures, rules and regulations, practices and processes for digital lending. Second, there's a need to have a greater emphasis on training programs to help bank staff understand the unique requirements of MSMEs better. Third, BSP and banks should also focus on educating the next generation who are more digitally inclined since they'll be the ones to manage the businesses 5 to 10 years from now. 
Fourth, banks can also explore partnering up with fintechs and online lending institutions which have the experience and infrastructure to be able to process data quickly. Fifth, education and training are important. Thus, there should be more digital finance and financial literacy trainings. Lastly, the authors recommend to have a similar study conducted among other lending institutions like microfinance, lending, and financing companies.